That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. But before I go, I'd like to uh, go ahead and knock out a little bit of viewer mail real fast. This one is from Mike T. in Ohio. And by the way, this subject comes up a lot in discussion groups, so I do want to hit this. Hi, Darren. Uh, was Canon specifically included or excluded as part of the proceedings of the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD? Okay, Mike, I think you meant 296 MA, not 325 AD. No, I'm just kidding. We'll have to make some allowances until everybody gets on board with the pre-Nicene calendar. The short answer to your question is yes, and it's an answer that people ingrained with the teachings from the apologetics industry do not want to hear. Their heads do a 180 and they start walking on ceilings when you tell them that the inclusion and exclusion of books for the Bible was decided at the council. Now, we've done entire episodes on this. They'll scream at you, no, it was just to decide on the Arian heresy. Now, this is also around the time that they start levitating and throwing furniture around the room. But at the end of the day, there are two facts that they can't dispute, and it's like watching a scene from the Exorcist movie when you explain it to them. The first is that Emperor Constantine, who presided over the council and was still worshipping the Roman sun god Sol Invictus during the 29 days it was in session, ordered 50 copies of the new Bible decided on at the council. He instructed Eusebius, yes, that Eusebius, who is known as the father of church history, to have 50 copies of the new Bible made right after the Council of Nicaea ended. We know it today as the Codex Vaticanus. And luckily, we have a copy of Constantine's order for the new Bibles. You know what? I have an idea. Let's read it together right now. Quote, I have thought it expedient to instruct your prudence to order 50 copies of the sacred scriptures, the provision and use of which you know to be most needful for the instruction of the church, to be written on prepared parchment in a legible manner and in a convenient portable form by professional transcribers thoroughly practice in their art." Unquote. Wow, he sounds so pleasant and polite in that letter, doesn't he? And that makes it all the more interesting to note that the year after the council ended, Constantine executed his wife and firstborn son. <coughs> the wife was boiled alive and his son was made to drink poison. Sorry, I got a little distracted there. W where was I? Yeah, the, the second confirmation of canon inclusion it comes to us from none other than St. Jerome himself, the very same saint who translated the Bible from Greek to Latin. So I think we can agree he may have known a thing or two about the Bible, right? Now, Jerome, in his prologue to Judith, makes the claim that the book of Judith was, quote, found by the Nicene Council to have been counted among the number of the sacred scriptures, unquote. Yeah. There was a whole lot more going on than just talking about the Arian heresy, and St. Jerome just confirmed it. And by the way, you can also read that quote in the Catholic Encyclopedia. Thank you very much for your question, Mike. I hope that was helpful. And lastly, just a housekeeping note, the pre-Nicene Christian Ecclesia, which is the non-denominational group that helps promote pre-Nicene Christianity worldwide, will be opening a small outreach office in Argentina next month. Now, if you live there and you're bilingual and you want to help out a little bit, you can send them an email. Their address is outreach at pre-nicene.org. Just put a dash between pre and Nicene. Outreach at pre-nicene.org. Now, word on the street is that uh, Christians are going to need all the help they can get in that country. So we wish them well in what is sure to be a fairly difficult endeavor. This has been Darren Kalama wishing you a Happy New Year on behalf of everyone at Pre-Nicene Perspective. We'll see you on the other side.
You've been listening to Pre-Nicene Perspective. To learn more about the first Bible and the first Christians, visit theveryfirstbible.org.